All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Right here, if you have a beard, random men are going to always walk up to you and try to lick your beard. Ew, that's so <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're one of the skin. Hold on, fuck. So I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Oh, well, you lost all your fleets. Oh, fuck. Not what we intended. Oh, God. What do we do? The Meta Show. Guys, welcome to the Meta Show. It is Saturday. We have the Matani, his beautiful red shirt, uh, and his little thing he has in this. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's not a beard. I don't, I don't know. But, it's uh, not glorious enough to be a beard. Oh, it's not, it's not yeah. a glorious, luxurious beard. But, and also, I'm not wearing uh, fantastic makeup like you are, so, you know, what can I say? I just can't compete. I, I mean, no beard, no makeup. I mean, you have to step up your game, man. Amateur hour here. Uh, <laughs> we apologize for the slight delays in getting started, boys and girls. We had, uh, there's apparently a massive series of tournaments on Twitch today. And so bandwidth is, whoa, we already have Hypno Kitten yes. up and running. That was massive. The, the <laughs> slight delay on me reacting to that, because uh, I'm looking over here at my oh, broadcast. Oh, yeah. Screen, and it's just like... So many resubs right now. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I guess people are just happy with the resubs because I'm wearing my red shirt again. It no. apparently scared people a little bit last week. Red because, shirt. Uh, red I was wearing a, a, a green. I know it wasn't green. It was a, it was gray. a gray shirt. Yeah. Gray shirt. It's very confusing. Well, I'm not really sure. Uh, enough enough about works. your your apparel oh, and my makeup. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's let's jump straight into it. So. Guys, this week in Nullsec, oh, it was kind of a big yeah. week. We have Fozzie Sav being implemented, and I swear to God, as this fucking cat keeps going off, I'm going to throw something. <laughs> um. <laughs> the system works. You can interrupt Laz, apparently, by subscribing, which is adorable. So, Fozzie Sav implemented, which, guys, Fozzie Sav is the first big update to Sav, and I believe they said six years was when Dominion entered? It was December of 2009, so essentially six years. Uh, five and a half, six yeah. years. Yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big change. Uh, so, one of the things we've seen a lot is as soon as Fozzie Sav came out, is the Russians <laughs> kind of had a heyday. You, you looked at Dot Land, and because all the timers are public now, which is, is, is like amazing. Like it's it's before you had spies to be able to tell you what when the timers were, so you go through party sites where you can still be there. Um, but now you are able to just go to Dotland or go to timerboard.net or anything like that to be able to see see these timers. Uh, and I, how, how is that going to affect uh, like industries like the GIA or different spy agencies, do you think, um, Tony? Well, I, I mean, basically we're in a situation, and this is going to be a key point that's going to come out throughout our, our discussion today, because uh, in almost every previous soft system, there was a degree of a fog of war in terms of the people who weren't involved in a war could try to spin or believe in fan fiction or whatever they wanted to believe about the realities on the ground. And one of the best things about Fozzie South, something that I absolutely adore, is the fact that there is no longer any fog of war, which is going to be useful for us because in a few minutes when I start laying down how things are about Fozzie South, uh, people are not going to be able to say, oh, well, you know, I heard from so-and-so that this system wasn't reinforced and that so-and-so wasn't winning or so-and-so wasn't losing. Like, everyone can see where a fight is going to be. Everyone can see the realities on the ground, uh, which I think is really great for people finding content. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's just a great change. Uh, in terms of spying, spying has never really been interesting in terms of... Uh, a like as an espionage agent you don't want to get into the spy game to go find a timer in a system or like look at somebody's timer board like you want to get in there you want to do sabotage you want to do high level strategic stuff you want to do sort of the great game as opposed to the sort of like pencil push it pushing kind of stuff about hey there's a timer here on this board so i in some people might complain about it impacting the mess the espionage meta game but uh not me i think it's great yeah well but Go ahead. Sorry, I, I'm getting Skype calls. I'm, uh, it's, it's, it's very chaotic today. so <laughs> All sorts of chaos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, well, then I'll just keep running my mouth if that's, uh, well, actually, if that's a thing. The point I was actually going to go into was, uh, I know I mentioned timers and stuff like that, but I guess one of the main things for spies was uh, getting, knowing when fleets were happening. But I guess with, even though the timers, you know the timers, that doesn't mean they're going to be forming for it. So time, spies will still be essential to knowing when hostiles plan on forming. Absolutely, and I mean, we've been, uh, we actually just relaunched a coalition level in the Imperium, instead of having an individual 
uh, you know, Goon Swarm Intelligence Agency or the TNT Spy Org or, uh, you know, the Initiatives one, as we actually just consolidated everybody together into a new entity called the Black Hand, which launched this week. Uh, we launched a whole series of uh, massive organizational changes uh, that kind of deployed this week. Uh, one of them, uh, and actually we're going to go into this later on in the show, we've got sort of a segment where we're going to look behind the curtain and show everybody some of the things we've been doing for months and months uh, with our lips being sealed and sort of reveal how uh, we were planning a lot of this stuff, you know, mm. years in advance, which is going to sound kind of crazy, but uh, if you connect the dots, you'll see no fog of war anymore. Um, the reason we get to do this <laughs> and focus on all this organizational stuff is, is that, um, you know, nobody's really up in our grill at all. Like, that's, that's one of the, the things about this is uh, reading Reddit after Fazisov hit, it was fascinating to me because people have been expecting us, and I say us being the Imperium, uh, to be unhappy with the mechanics of the game, I mean, the mechanics of the system, this, that, the other thing, and that we would uh, somehow catch fire. And instead, it's the rest of the galaxy seems to be kind of... Well, it's, it's funny because one of the... the... One of the posts that drew the most attention was a post by Muck Barovian of PL uh, going, guys, everything else is being reinforced. Why is there only one system from the CFC and reinforced, or the Imperium, sorry? I don't know what the CFC thing is. Uh, <laughs> and, it's uh, very confusing to me. And maybe we can ask Elise about, about it when he comes on. But I, I got a huge kick out of it, just just scrolling through that thread and people like, what's happening with the Imperium? How come the Imperium's not getting hit? I mean, you had people like the like uh, Moa uh, talk about how they're going to uh, drive our dicks into the dirt with this new soft system, and uh, it's not proving to be too effective so far, at least uh, according to the Well, I mean, th the funniest thing about this is, is that uh, people have many assumptions about how the psychology of this works. Mm -hmm. In the run-up to Fazisov, everybody was talking about troll interceptors. Oh, and to be yeah. fair, the biggest complaints that we're seeing, and we'll get to this a little bit more later, mm -hmm. the biggest complaints we're seeing about Fazisov come from alliances that have ridiculous number of systems, very few people in their alliance, and should really just be consolidating down to a constellation. Right. Uh, the idea of troll scepters, I mean, it's true that there should probably be some balance tweaks to these, and we can, we can get nitty-gritty about this, in a moment. But uh, what happened was, out of NPC space and territory like that, people would come out with interceptors with hacking modules on them right. into this links. I just call them hack mods. Um, so there's all these guys hacking our stuff, or trying to, and what they don't realize is that if you've actually lived in your space and you've used your index, your ADM, your active defense multiplier, uh, if you've jacked your decks, they have to basically sit there for like 40 minutes twiddling, if not longer, twiddling. And if you're a solo, if, like if you're the kind of pilot who is flying a solo interceptor, you're usually looking for instant action. Like mm -hmm. the, the, the fantasy of the uh, solo interceptor pot player is not, I'm gonna go sitting there orbiting something for 50 minutes, <laughs> twiddling, doing nothing, and then, oh my, all of a sudden, 50 or 100 people just dropped on top of me, or even five people dropped on top right. of them. Uh, they get chased off, and if they succeed, in running away, they get to look forward to the opportunity to sit there packing and twiddling again until five more people come after 30 minutes and chase them away. So this grand, amazing, you know, apocalypse that was forecasted by people who don't understand how blocks oh, work, people who don't understand yeah. how psychology works, uh, for months now, uh, simply didn't come to pass. And we don't even have to say that we're in the spin zone because we can point to the reality of the map on Dotland and say, Everybody else's shit is on fire. Ours is not. What does that say about your predictions? The, the public API where everyone can see everyone's timers now. I, I, yeah. Like, I love it and I hate it. Little at the same smug. Time. Little smug, I mean, not going to lie. I feel like we've done very well. I, I, I think I just saw you pop your collar a little bit. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I don't think the internet's going to be able to handle the rest of the stream. Sheer, the sheer <laughs> amount of smug that's coming. Wait until we get to the uh, the behind the curtain bit, too. That's going to be even worse. I, I don't have enough bandwidth for this for this stream. <laughs> we, we, we do have, uh, you know, we, we do have one other major sort of thing that's happened today, actually, just before the show, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Goonswarm has has relaunched a renter program that's compatible with Fozzysoft. Yep. And I was reading about this before like before you guys broadcast about it and I still don't know what the hell is going on. Okay. <laughs> so the, the the funny thing and this is going to come up a lot is is that large scale organizational dynamics are opaque to most people. Mm -hmm. 
in the sense that when you're a game designer or when you're just a, a small scale PvP or guy and you're trying to figure out how all this shit works and you're trying to design a system where this works or blocks get broken down or blah blah blah, uh, if you don't have much direct experience with how these things operate, it's very hard to make any reasonable predictions. That's a, a big caveat. Why am I saying this? The design of FozzySoft appears to be done in a way to break down the old school system of renters, like Shadow of X Death, the right. Solar Fleet Citizens, uh, you know, Pub Lord, which was the Imperium's version of it, uh, where you have just a, an existing renter alliance. Uh, and one of the quirks of FozzySoft is you can just use some basic API and security protocols to shove all the renters into your mother alliance. They can't hack your stuff. They can only defend your stuff. They can jack your indexes. So we were like our finance team. We're the same people who came up with the uh, the infamous like faction warfare forex trading adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, basically said, hey, well, we will revive our renter system. We're going to shove all these guys directly into, in our case, in Goon Swarm, and put them in pure blind, and they can jack up the ADMs and uh, laugh all the way to the bank. Yeah. So renting now. Everybody has for months been saying that renting in the, the new world of Fazisov is going to you know vanish. And it's true that the old method of doing it is gone. But here we are like day three and um, you know the, the doors are open and the isk is flowing <laughs> already. So Aerith uh, is in chat and wanting to get a shout out. Shout out and he gets uh, massive props for uh, basically cracking this aspect of the system yeah. open inside of like three hours. Well, and the biggest... The biggest downside that people are probably going to scream about is going to be, what about spies? And whenever people ask about FCing and how to handle spies and stuff like that, and the biggest thing, biggest thing I can tell them is always assume there's going to be a spy. So bringing these people in, I mean, we already have Karma Fleet, Amok Fleet, <laughs> Bat Fleet. I mean, there's not much of a change. I yeah, mean, no, I mean, you know, AWOXing, spies, all that other sort of stuff, it's not really a problem. The other thing about the system... Uh, and, and this is a, a point that I think a lot of people missed in terms of nuance regarding Fozisov, <laughs> is that there is less strategic risk now, simply because uh, many of the mechanics in terms of things that you could do with alt corps relating to SBUs, under the Dominion system, one of the ways that we would really fuck with people uh, would be to infiltrate a hostile alliance, not with a spy, but with an alt corp. And the reason, and we use this to great effect during the Fountain Invasion, uh, where what we would do is use that alt corp to online or offline SBUs and then be able to take them down or add them whenever we chose using that corp. Uh, by removing SBUs from the system and just removing the impact of like rules like, uh, you know, config star base doesn't right. really matter, any of these things don't matter, there's now no reason not to just shove all these other randos under the Aegis, as it were, appropriate pro appropriately enough, Aegis expansion. Now everybody, all the renters go under the uh, aegis of uh, the Mother Alliance, which I think is a massive unintended consequence that nobody uh, I see designed what you did the system. Yeah, exactly. Ah, it's very subtle. Ah, very subtle. Ah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Even my, I'm, I'm starting to suffocate myself, I think, with the love of the smug that's sort of wafting from me. Or maybe that's just my cologne. I don't know. <laughs> well, and I, I, think, I think with that, I think it might be the perfect time to transfer over to the next, the new segment, rather. Oh, uh, my. Behind the Curtain. Which behind is, the Curtain. Behind the Curtain, guys. A lot of you like to hear Matani talk about it and see his head blow up like a fucking hot air balloon. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today, guys. So uh, just get your raincoats. Oh, if it explodes God. for getting too big, uh, I'm going to be the, the uh, I guess, not benefactor. Collateral, collateral, collateral damage. Collateral damage. Yes. You're starting this, you're, <laughs> you're exacerbating the problem. <laughs> okay. So... Starting off, uh, let's talk about some of the stuff CFC. Oh my god! Sorry, the Imperium. The Imperium. Uh, what is the Imperium doing? How how have they handled Fazisov, and how come they're sitting so pretty right now uh, in this current environment, in the new environment, rather? Okay. Well, I mean, right now the biggest thing that we're doing uh, that you can see is we have uh, Bomber Waffa with DBRB, who of course has the boat show on in a couple hours after this broadcast, uh, DBRB took bombers down to Quirius to basically test everything that we wanted to see in practice about Fazisov uh, using Darkness, mm -hmm. uh, Dot, and everybody else in that region as sort of uh, as a guinea pig. Uh, that's been going very well. Uh, what's been funny about it is we're discovering lots of things that were not discovered on the duality deployment. I mean, as 
a uh, few of our viewers know, know there was a like a, a test contest for Fozisov on the Duality server, and it didn't really tell anybody anything useful because it was a bunch of Alliance tournament ships flying around and doing random crap that had nothing to do with tranquility. So this is our test case. Um, that's one look behind the curtain, but it's not really like a, a crazy mm -hmm. puppet mastery kind of thing. I hope you guys are ready to go down the rabbit hole, and I'm actually going to sit up in my seat and crack my knuckles because we don't we don't normally like reveal these kind of things so i need i need the, uh, <clears throat> the movie the movie from uh willy wonka and Cho Cho chocolate factory to play right now all right so uh first of all i want to go back just a few meta shows ago where mm -hmm. i have been pretty much every single meta show at the lead up to fozzy Sov, i have relentlessly been repeating the fact that organized groups always benefit the most whenever a difficulty of a system is raised. Mm -hmm. And now because there is no fog of war, you can look at Dotland and see what is happening in the galaxy and see that lo and behold, we were correct. Fozisov in many ways increases the organizational complexity necessary to be able to keep track of what's happening in your space. And that's why the Imperium is basically fine, while a lot of other people, particularly the group that's in uh, Gentleman's Club, uh, has like a hundred sob systems for two thousand player characters in their alliance, and they're running around screaming with their hair on fire. Uh, lo and behold, so that's that's well, point one. Well, let me interrupt you just for a second. I know this is your rant time. I don't want don't remember, don't want to see your spotlight. But is it a, is it an issue with organization or is it an issue of numbers? I, what's, I think what's, it's what's an the issue. Balance? I think that it's it's primarily an issue of organization, and the mm -hmm. the reason why I say that is is that the reason why you're seeing the Imperium deploying all these new organizations and policies and changing this and changing that is is that we spent months preparing for this moment right uh gentlemen's club and all these other entities that haven't raised their indexes in advance and that hadn't spent some time with their brain trust drilling down into it i do think that gentlemen's club has way too many systems no matter what but even entities that are smaller could be more organized they're not more organized right. and they've been punished by this because if you if you screw up uh, defending your your uh, timers or hack, uh, counter hacking in Fozisov, you know you're punished with even more work later, and God forbid your vulnerability windows start out really large because then it makes it easy for people to hack you. Uh, your players get more and more burned out because instead of watching their sov for four hours a day or three hours a day, they're watching their sov for like twelve hours a day, and it just it's just sort of an escalating mess that comes from a lack of preparation. Um, so kind of an I told you so so thing, but it's nice to see that. Uh, you know, I guess it's nice. It's good for us. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that it's good for anybody else who's less organized, but it, it is sort of proves our point. Um, but well, the map. I, guess, I mean, the map proves our point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, there, there, there is no debate. Um, so where we get into the really crazy puppet master stuff is one of the things that people noticed us doing in the days after Fozisoft hit was immediately implementing a reimbursable. My strategic mining fleet doctrine, which we're calling for now provisionally war crabbing, because the Russians call Care Bears crabs, and it's this whole sort of like weird Eve in joke. Um, and people were kind of going like, "Oh, oh my God, you guys have a have a uh, mining fleet that's so crappy." Well, one, mining got buffed a whole lot in the sob system. That's great. Two, um, you used to not be able to do this. Like you used to not really be able to do anything involving a nullsec mining fleet because mining barges were so absolutely fragile. Mm -hmm. We have been pushing for an occupancy-based SOB system at an organizational level through our CSM representatives, myself, Scion, Indy, everyone for years. Farms and fields, occupancy SOB, all this stuff. Around the same time that we started pushing for all of this, we also started doing things like the ice interdiction and burn Jita, and basically suicide ganking everything that moves. So now we have this lovely little ship that costs only 25 million esque thereabouts, called a procurer, dirt cheap, 100,000 EHP tank, and that didn't exist at the T1 level whatsoever uh, until we just relentlessly ganked miners and sponsored Hulk of Guidance and did all of this stuff for years until killing them enough that CCP buffed them. And now, lo and behold, we have a strategic mining fleet that can actually defend itself to buff our indexes without any real trouble. Well, um, you, you said these are called 25 mil? Like, yeah, procurers, procurers are dirt cheap. They're so like, they're the Tech One, right? Yeah, the Tech One has so 100,000. I, I, I have zero, zero, in, I, I have zero knowledge about mining. So Tech One mining barges. So kind of like our Tech One catalyst ganking yes. freighters. 
So. We ganked mining barges so relentlessly for so many mm -hmm. years, and the people who were getting ganked cried so much that they have now been massively buffed, and it means that we can run around and jack our indexes. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's actually pretty that, impressive. That that is. It, 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 <laughs> Uh, so that's that's one thing, and people are not going to believe us, and that's fine because they don't need to believe us because fuck it, we have our indexes, and we just don't have to worry about. Them. Point two. Um, another thing that we've been doing, like it, it would be alien for alien on Goonie is the joke, for our guys to actually get into a system and do mining fleets or do these sort of patriotic ratting things to boost our indexes. Um, we didn't know what the game was going to be like. We didn't know when Fossey Sub was going to hit, but what we've been doing by going multi-platform from the Imperium, going into H1Z1, going into World of Warships, and basically doing our organized play program, it was pitched initially as a way for us to just kind of twiddle and like, you know, wait for Fossey Sub to hit, but our guys immediately were used to working together in environments that were alien, essentially totally different games, and that's why we were able to shift and say, okay, we're going to do organized ratting, we're going to do organized mining, here's your procurer fleet, Go nuts, guys. And that, you know, it, it's all kind of coming together nicely. Mm -hmm. And um, I really I really can't complain. It's, it's, ni so, it's nice when a plan comes together. So let me, let me see if I can lay this out and wrap my head around it. So we have Section 8 combined, combined with Tech 1 mining barges. Yep, to jack up. So even our renters now, which are part of Goon Swarm and part of every Imperium Alliance, I'm sure, will spin up their own thing, to boost the indexes in... Mining barges, which are now far harder to kill because we have been relentlessly persecuting them over the last four years or so until they got massively buffed to have 100,000 EHP and cost like 30 mil a pop. And all these people, our guys, the Strategic Mining Organization, and the new renters will all be working together to make sure that the ADMs across Imperium territory are something like six. Hmm. Wow, uh, that's pretty. Uh, it's pretty much a mic drop moment. So we, we, we don't really, I don't want to do this as like a regular meta show section because there's it's very rare that you can just come and like drop all this crap on the table and say, "What up?" Oh, well, uh, I think I think maybe once every, every every once a month might might work out. <laughs> we'll see. I'll I'll have to step my scheming up uh, to be able to compensate for that. But that's uh that is the uh, the behind the curtain puppet master thing here oh. and. Uh, you that's, know, believe what you want. We're smug regardless. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's pretty awesome. I mean, and um, I think we should, if we're done with with your behind the curtain, I think we can kind of roll into maybe a little bit more of a mitten spotlight and let's talk about some of the fixes to Fozzy stuff. I know you mentioned some of those uh, before and a little bit of ranting you wanted to do. Well, you know, it, it's tough because um, do we actually have like a, a like one of those like things that goes across the screen for when I start ranting? Because I'm actually pretty happy. Maybe we we, we don't like, have one of those graphics yet, actually, but we we definitely uh, need something. We should just almost as much as I need a, a real facial hair. Um, <laughs> we, we 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 just need like a picture of you with devil horns or something and like yeah, red graphics, eyes. Graphics, graphics, we can work on yeah. that. We can do me fixing this. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so. The thing about Fozzysoft is, is that I was really kind of worried going into it. After the buff to anomalies, the buff to mining, and a lot of these things, I think most of the howling that I've seen, and it is howling, like if you, if you go on the EVE subreddit right now, uh, the, there are just uh, several threads of people talking about how this is the worst system ever. Uh, there's somebody saying that it's literally AIDS, it's got 480 comments. Mm -hmm. And the people who team, seem to be howling the most are guys from Gentleman's Club. Uh, so I think that's going to be important to highlight when we move into this discussion. Um, there are a lot of areas that show that the system is working. And when I say the system is working, I mean that an alliance that has 2,000 characters in it should not have 108 soft systems. That's more soft systems than Goonswarm has. Mm -hmm. We've got like 14, 13,000 characters in our alliance. Um, these guys are saying that we're, they're not able to hold their space, um, that dealing with as many nodes as they are oh, problematic, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, basically, that's what they get, and I think that's great. Where mm -hmm. I do think that there need to be some tweaks with Fozzysov are really just around the edges. There are areas where an attacker is dealing with a defender who doesn't show up, and hacking 10 command nodes seems a little bit excessive. There was one suggestion that somebody had that you make it more like a tennis system, where like you spawn five, and if you're ahead by three or somebody never shows up, you just win. Uh, 
I believe, and I think most people will agree with me, that if you do not show up to defend your system, you should be punished and that the attacker should have an easier time rather than mm -hmm. twiddling for an hour. Um, so, I mean, hypothetically, you hit an ADM6 system, something like that, uh, that's potentially up to like an hour of twiddling time, right. and your opponents oh, do not show up for yeah. it at all. So you as the attacker, you lock them down to the staging system, they can't undock, and you turn up, nobody else turns up, and you're like, well, I now have to spend uh, an hour for ten people just twiddling, mm -hmm. doing nothing. Well, they don't. They all don't spawn at the same time either. Uh, so I think like only a certain amount spawn, and then you, right. once you start capping those, and the next one spawn after X amount of time, and it goes so, and it goes and it goes. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force a particular gameplay mechanic down everybody's throats. I think mm -hmm. that if you have a undefended situation, it should go faster. You yeah. do need the defender an opportunity to turn up. Well, That's why the teams exist. But um, and from an FC perspective, as like as a defender, uh, with all this happening. I, I will gladly blue ball a hostile fleet and then have a fleet of falcons just warp around and just jam things, these attackers, while they're trying to flip these nodes that take 40 minutes per, per flip or an hour per flip. So you, know, you just sit there and just warp around with nothing but falcons or sensor damps and just completely break their locks at all times. Let's go ahead and bring Elise in if we can, because he yeah. is also a Saab expert, and I think that it would be really valuable. If we're going to have a rolling discussion of improvements to Fozzy Saab, let's get Elise on board. We can do that. Let's see. Make sure. Hopefully, he won't walk away from his computer. He's active in chat, so we should be in good shape. Boom. Mystery Lee should be calling in right now. Oh God. Uh, maybe, maybe. Well, I, he he is ringing. You should you should see his little his character portrait. He doesn't have a webcam webcam today. Uh, he's a little little camera shy, so it's okay. Very nice. There I sent go. you a, a picture of me trying to set up my camera. Oh, did you? Oh, I didn't have time to, to look oh, at it. Oh, wow. So. No, it, it's beautiful. It involves, uh, <laughs> the, there's a picture of, like, scotch and a cigar box. And there's <laughs> a, a restaurant, an idiot, and it's beautiful. So, yeah, no, th there are pictures of, of Elise that we could put on the show. I try. That are just, try. That are just is, is it in Skype? Yeah, it's in yeah. Skype. Uh, I, I'm going to have to screw up our screen regions real quick. Oh. Okay. We're doing it live. So actually, while Laz is messing with that, Elise, all right, we're good. We're back on. What's that? We're back on. We're good. Awesome. Elise, why don't you go ahead and let us uh, know your thoughts as to how, like, just let's start from the top. What do you think about this system? And uh, do you like it? Not like it? What would you change? What would you leave the same? I think I like it more than definitely the average redditor. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, well said, sir. <laughs> I don't think it's a doom and gloom. It's a it's a nice it's a change. Which I was on record saying that you could change the Dominion Solve system to absolutely anything, and it would be a massive improvement. Just because the Dominion Solve system was just so stale, like we knew mm -hmm. everything about it, we knew every single way to manipulate it. So let's get something new in there. And people they hate. did they took what I thought was the kind of the most boring and shitty part of factional warfare, and they used that as the basis as the capture mechanics. But whatever, it's something that they had a basis on, so it's not making a whole new system from scratch. They could build on it. I'm kind of okay with it. I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, these, these interceptors are just too powerful. Like, it's, it's just, it's the worst. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like, you have to sit there. If you've tried to impose something with an interceptor, it's awful. Mm -hmm. If you've got any ADM at all in your system, it's easy to counter. It's really you can just take, like, a steeple just... with a probe. Or a jam. Yeah. I mean, any kind of. Um, I mean, God forbid to use a kits. How do you pronounce it? Kitsune, Kitsune, whatever. I call the, it Kitsune. I do it wrong. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, interceptors have really low sensor strength, so you let the. I mean, if you've jacked your indexes the way that you're supposed to, uh, you let the guy who's like an elite PvP. I'm a solo interceptor pilot, and I'm going to burn this vast empire down because <laughs> of reasons. Uh, you let him go until five minutes before his uh, his hack finishes, and then you just press your jam, decode it, and jam the guy, and he's screwed. Uh, yeah, well, it's sort of like any. There's a warm up cycle to the Intosis module, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah. after the warm up cycle, for the Tech 1 mods, which is the only thing an interceptor can fit, the warm up cycle is five minutes. Oh. So um, after the warm up cycle, every minute that they put on there, or every second that they put on there, actually stays on the Intosis module. 
or it stays on the um, structure that you're in. It's true. It does mean that when you counter hack, that you know you have to build it back up. Mm-hmm. But if you're trying to just mess with somebody and break them psychologically, not that we in the Imperium specialize in psychological warfare or anything like that, uh, I would absolutely wait to the point that they are thinking that they're going to win, and that's when you drop in on top of them and ruin their day, and then invite them kindly to try to be a solo troll scepter. Mm-hmm. In another system of yours, at which point you will again wait until the very last minute before you come in and kill them or drive them off. Yeah, exactly. That's so that's the thing. Nice. Like, all you have to do is drive them off. And so you can let them spend, if you have an ADM of four in your system, which isn't that hard to maintain, like, that's uh, a little bit of ratting and owning the system for a long time. And that's it. You've got an ADM of four. Yeah, so I mean, for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, this interceptor is doing his thing. You come in, he has to run away because he has no guns on his ship. And then you spend five minutes in Tosasing it back, and that's 30 minutes of his life are wasted for five <laughs> minutes of your life. It seems like a pretty good trade-off. For the defenders, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the thing. I, I don't think – I think it's overstated a little bit too much. But I, it's not, I think... I'm not trying to say, like, the people that are overstating it are dumb or bad. It just – it's a system that we've had for less than a week. Mm-hmm. I like, will say – will figure out a way around I will say that the people that are overstating it are dumb and bad. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and do that because I'm a jerk. Well, it's, sure. Everyone hates um, change, for, like, yeah, no matter what part of life it is. That's basically all it is. I mean, the the thing about this that everybody has to keep in mind is it is a new mechanic system. We don't have six years of experience with it, and instead of going, "Oh my God, somebody moved my cheese," you have to adapt and think about this. Now, the more organized player groups have been thinking about this for a while and were able to deploy things, but you know, I. I rather like it. I mean, we, we have yet to see a full-scale war in mm. this system. I mean, we have Bomber Waff conquering checks, you know, sections of Quarius, but that's not being contested. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see when the Imperium decides to give Providence a visit, once we really sort of have our heads straight and have sort of figured everything out. That is still coming. Uh, mm. The true Emperor does need to be put on the throne. Um, well, but, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. New tactics, new EFT, new doctrines. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity here, and I think people are just being babies. Well, and from the chat, a, a, a pretty good point. Uh, Q Man the Great says the te- Tech Two modules, which you the Tech Two modules are a huge improvement over the Tech One, uh, are way too expensive right now. And then he also says, but we you know, we still haven't had any good fights. Being that it has been out for less than a week, you you, sh- you would have expected to see a couple big fights uh, in this time because I mean people are reinforcing things. And you're seeing huge amounts of timers on across across the board there. Uh, I, the global timer page is absolutely insane. By I, it's I hilarious. Talked about it for it's a little great. bit. It I, I think insane. it's beautiful. I, and um, it's, well, I mean, Elise, do you do you think that there is a, a reason that they haven't really seen any big fights yet, or or I think well, right right now in Eve, like people had put the pigeonhole themselves in these like really stale situations, just waiting for this moment to come out. So the big thing in Eve that you need to preserve, or at least what people think you need to preserve is your momentum. And nobody really wanted to lose momentum before Fazisov came out. So they all kind of just stayed in these holding patterns, just waiting, waiting, waiting. So everyone's sort of waiting for someone to make the first move uh, before reacting. Hmm. Uh, so that's why I think nobody's really going to war. But I don't know. I, 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 think... I think it's, you know, I don't think that people have, like, we need to see as an organization, well, not an organization, as a community, the EVE community as a whole, uh, people need to see what the cost and benefits are. And yeah, exactly. right now we are collectively, I mean, PL isn't, the Imperium isn't, but everybody else is pretty much, and I hope this is a fair thing to say, this is not me being a dick. Uh, in the Imperium, we refer to this as a state of org shock, when there's a big new change and everybody's just going like, what the fuck, and they're emotional, they're not thinking in a, in a sort of, you know, they don't have ice in their veins, they're not thinking in a cold and rational way. Um, and I think inside of a week or two, once people kind of get over it and realize that like whining isn't going to make it better, it's time to like you know roll up your sleeves, boot up EFT, start inventing some doctrines. Uh, if you have to consolidate your space, consolidate your space. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the Gentleman's Club example is fascinating to me because PL gave up all of their space. The Imperium gave up the entirety of the Southwest and even Cloud Ring on top of that and consolidated. People have known for months that some of the um, more invested, not necessarily better players, we are the Imperium, we're not better players. PL is usually higher skilled. Um, <laughs> whoa, but certainly, whoa, the more invested, uh, <laughs> certainly the more invested players have been making these moves of consolidating in preparation for this. And it's interesting to me to see so much howling from people who could have seen all these other guys who play a hell of a lot of EVE have done this. 
maybe we should do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, we didn't. Now we're getting screwed in an entirely predictable way. Um, that everybody well, else saw coming. Let's go cry on Reddit about it. Well, and, spe and speaking about PL Gaming while there's space, uh, how smug are you right now, at least, with all the howling that's going on on the forum? Or Man, on Reddit? It's so good. Like, it's, <laughs> it's really beautiful. good to be like, where I am. Because uh, last week, as an alliance, we just moved over to Delve just because we, we saw like this little power vacuum opening up in Fountain Delve. So we're like, hey, I don't want to have like a hellish move op when everyone's there. Let me just mm -hmm. move first. So I got to move in first. That was nice. Only lost one cap. Thank God. Um, one. But yeah, now I just I have two months worth of resources pumped into like making this wormhole super highway thing going on. That's what I've been doing. Now I just get to chill and delve when I see a timer like cool. I reverse probe away there, keep eyes there. If someone shows up, I show up. If no one shows up, I don't show up. I just go back to doing whatever. Yeah, so so now that you guys know all the timers in Eve, you guys can kind of jump around with wormholes if you can find one. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think it's going to be great from both a, a wormhole content perspective as well as from an espionage content perspective because so many tasks that, now that everybody can see where every fight is, Everyone who's been involved in the espionage agencies, which, by the way, if you're interested in learning how to spy and you're part of the Imperium, please join the Black Hand. A little plug there. Total, totally shameless. Um, but, you know, our agents can now focus on what I think are more interesting gameplay rather than going like, oh, there's a timer here. Better tell my handler or whatever. They can, you know, focus their efforts on shit that's just more fun. Um, I think it's great. I mean, I think the, here is another thing that I, I like about Fozisov that isn't reflected in the current system which is many of the suggestions that I've seen uh, posted on Reddit that were actually reasonable um, revolve around tweaking the number of, and the method of like command node spawning is you can just tweak the system by changing the numbers. Like the, the system yeah, exactly. essentially yeah. allows mm -hmm. scalability. You go, okay, well, 10 command nodes doesn't work and the time that they're spawning doesn't work. Okay, well, now we'll have five command nodes and you know first to three wins, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. It should be easier for CCP to tweak this and iterate on it than the Dominion system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I, I, I made like a really try hard post on Reddit that I kind of, I think I I'm got sure baited. I'm sure it was ignored. I'm sure it was completely ignored. <laughs> I definitely got baited <laughs> into it by someone trolling, but. Okay. Is this uh, one you so linked what, me? What? Is this I could, one? Uh, it might have been, yeah. Okay. If not, I'll look for it and, and send it in a second. But okay. uh, yeah, my main qualm is that uh, it's sort of similar to, to what you mentioned is that every node is worth the same, right? So I had sort of just a notion. Obviously, I'm a horrible game designer, so maybe this idea is bad, but just a notion where uh, sort of the nodes closer to the system that you're fighting over should be worth a little bit more. Not like worth five nodes or anything like that, but just so the outlying nodes are kind of weaker and then the inner nodes are a little bit stronger, so you want to kind of fight over the inner ones. Or if you're like a really scrappy gorilla type guy, you can just fight over the outer ones a little bit more. I don't know, just just a little bit of nuance that way, but the thing is, like, you don't have to change the entire system to do that. Just a I, little. I really like that idea. Knob turning, like. I th yeah, I think that each no that's a neat one. I don't know whether mechanically CCP has the the resources to be able to code that, but having the nodes have different values, you know, it has a scouting element because you can find this node has this value. Oh, this is closer to the target system. Let's fight over here. Um, you know, having fewer no like the big thing that I see is is that if the enemy does not show up at all completely like there needs to be a way to just kind of wrap this sucker up and you know I, my gut feeling is that that 10 nodes is just too much that's what most of what we're hearing from duality and that's what most of the feedback we've been hearing from people uh, in Aquarius and just engaging in the gameplay on Trank have been saying that when you're capturing and there's not a fight uh, 10 nodes is just ridiculous well, yeah I mean, when there's no fight it's actually it's way worse than uh, if it's like an ADM system of 4 or higher <laughs> the attacker it's way worse than the old soft system I think like it just takes so long, and you have to organize each person going to each node. Yeah, in the, in the old system with Dominion, and also with POS Warfare, one of the things that was kind of nice is that if somebody didn't show up to defend or do, do something, you could basically just sweep an entire region like so, mm -hmm. and that would mm -hmm. be that. Well, I mean, and we were talking about this before, you, uh, before I called you in, uh, Elise, was as a defender, do you, do you see it as a valid tactic to say, hey, I'm going to blue ball this, this fight, but I'm going to form up a fleet of uh, griffins or falcons or something and just warp it around and jam, these, jam their fleet while they're trying to entosis? I mean, do you, like, as a, just a, as a massive troll, do you see that as being viable? And, and how do you, I mean, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. I think the jamming thing, I think it works to, like, thwart away 
T1 troll frigates and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But if someone has an actual fleet, I don't think the jamming's going to do all that much. Um, so someone hired me yesterday, hired PL, to help them save a system, which is kind of a neat thing. So we probed the wormhole out over there, and we're just waiting on the other side of a wormhole, or about to, ready to form for the other side of a wormhole. And instead of just going there and doing everything, I just gave them a little bit of, of advice, which is just put as many people as you can covering each of the nodes in a really annoying ship, like a Vagabond or something with a T2 link. And the guys that came in to capture the system from them, they, they don't have that much experience with the system yet, so they don't know what to expect. But they didn't have enough probers and webbers. So the Vagabond would just like orbit the thing at 200 super fast. They couldn't catch him. By the time they finally did catch him, they captured like eight of the other nodes. Mm -hmm. So after that, the guys were like, okay, now we have to capture 18 of these nodes. This is awful. And they just left. Like, that's it. So. <laughs> Unfortunately, I mean, Winning. after the attackers do leave, then the defenders, I mean, to be fair, as a defender, uh, you do get, you know, it, it's a lot faster for you to counter hack. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the challenge, of course, is that when you are defending and you manage to screw up and let a troll sucker through and all these command note spawns, then, you know, you do have to go through and sort of do cleanup. But the cleanup isn't so much of a problem if you have boosted your indexes, right? You don't have to be punished with doing undefend, I mean, um, no offensive defensive timers to, to clean up messes if you did your homework in the first place, if you're making sure that people are responding, if you have an active homeline defense organization, and if you make sure that your ADMs are high enough, you have more than enough time to react to a troll scepter. And if you don't want to have this useless system, and this is another thing, this is, a, this is a key thing, there are no more useless systems. The argument of, oh, this system in pure blind sucks is gone. Mining got buffed before Fazisov hit, and then just before Fazisov hit, there was this huge buff to anomalies, where if you raise the indexes, you can install pirate detection arrays, and now they're just they're not as good as the super true sex systems. Mm -hmm. But even regions like Providence, which incidentally is up for a lot of trouble, not because the Imperium is going to try to take it over, we're just doing role playing stuff there, but because Providence and Cloud Ring and Pure Blind and all these crap regions, once they're upgraded, have real value. So the excuse of, oh, well, this is a system with a low ADM and it's a crappy system and who needs it is, well, if you don't need that crappy system, either upgrade it and make it not a crappy system or ditch the thing. Done. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the, the neat thing you talked about is with uh, Providence and the historically shitty regions is they're actually not shitty anymore. They're actually more valuable because I don't want to live out in Malpace even though it has the best true sec because if I'm, as an FC, gone for a long weekend, my shit's burned to the ground if if I'm just not there to react. Yeah, it's crazy the way If that... I live in Providence, like, okay, I'll just retreat to Losec, all my shit's safe, then I can go back and do the tug of war again and take my things back slowly without losing anything forever. We are seeing a, a great deal of upheaval, I think, in, in the drone regions in general, because again, instead of using like the sort of new model of renter system that Goonstorm just implemented, uh, they do still have a lot of the old school setup. So there are lots of people running around um, and doing the troll sector thing or just with small fleets. I mean, one of the things, uh, so I mean, that, that entire region in the, north we, in the Northeast mm -hmm. is in some trouble, but one of the things that I think people will develop as they adapt the new system, which I'm excited by, which is good for Eve, is before a system hits tranquility, people have an idea in their head about how it's gonna go. And the community has been laser focused on troll scepters and T2 and Tosis links, which in general don't get used too much because of the power grid requirements and the expense. Um, what we have yet to see is an upgrade in guerrilla and harassment warfare. People just assumed they would do troll scepters and it would be peachy keen because that's what all the discussion was about. Why aren't we seeing, and I hope we will soon see, you know, small groups of like five to ten guys in a fleet that can sort of deal with, you know, solo defenders uh, running around and engaging in more effective tactics, actually providing some of the small gang gameplay that this sort of stuff was intended to. You are not going to succeed unless you are against a completely AFK empire using a solo troll center. You will hate yourself. You will get bored. You will be basically providing content for everybody who lives there. Um, well, maybe maybe Elise can expand upon that. I mean, why why do you think you only see one or two people going and, and toasting things instead of actually an organized group? Well, I think for right now, people just want to see how the system works, right? So essentially, they're leveraging their happiness against the happiness of the defender, mm -hmm. uh, just just to see who could uh, make the one the most miserable, like the first one that blinks 
and says, I'm going to go play another game, loses. So I think that's just like a little bit of trial and error for now. But it's definitely not going to be... I don't think it's going to be the way that people attack empires or anything. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be like, okay, Atron, this is this is how I, I fight yeah. the <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to reveal too much of our, our plans because obviously we're still, like, what we're doing in Quirius and just watching what people are doing and getting data in uh, is really going to inform how the Imperium first goes to war. But a lot of the tactics of the Dominion system that rely on either psychology or just, you know, just raw force remain the same in this system. I mean, camping your target, if they're not an equal foe, camping your target into their staging system, that's still kind of a no-brainer. Like, if you can manage to do that and lock them down while you're doing ops. So we're still going to see that. You're still yeah, going to see Yeah, the is actually even more powerful than ever, and so is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually disgusting. <laughs> we, I think we have this so discussion. Right, evil villain left sort of slipped out there, but yes, no, you're absolutely right. Well, this week, this week, not... yeah, this week we on Newbie Tuesday we did we did fuzzy stuff. We had a long discussion about the hell camping, and uh, and I think Elise, uh, I'm correct if I'm wrong, you explained that you think you're going to see mo more people spread out their assets to multiple systems. They're going to have to, right? Like, so I assume this is how it's going to play out. Like an alliance of let's say 1,500 people. Instead of controlling, say, 50 or 60 systems, they're going to have to live in a constellation, just one constellation, because that's essentially all that they can defend. Mm. And they'll just spread out between all the systems in that constellation. Hopefully they'll have a non-shitty constellation that's going to be next to with jump range of NPC space somehow. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're not in that situation, then you're screwed, because oh, we man. were talking about ways that you can manipulate the system that I don't know if a lot of people figured out yet, but you can... If you decide to hell camp someone's staging system, you can actually yeah. kite it into whatever timer you want. Uh oh, secrets out. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Elise. <laughs> totally not planning on. So, guys, okay, so after this quick commercial break, um... <laughs> <laughs> Elise is having random connectivity issues. We don't know why. We lost this Skype call. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, right. so I mean that's that's completely ridiculous, mm -hmm. and so it's really strong. Like that's that's the one thing that I think needs to be tweaked more than anything else. It's just well, do we know if that was intended? I mean, that's one of the things that struck me as odd. This is a secret. It's not a secret. It's a it's a part of the gameplay that anybody can test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now that we're talking about it, the cat is out of the it's bag. already out of the bag. The hypno kitten is out of the bag. You know the 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 oh, whole <laughs> the nicely done. That. So I thought Casper North was here from the K color. Um, <laughs> but, you know, this is a real challenge. One of the weird quirks that I'm seeing about the system, and this is me sort of, you know, looking into my crystal ball, is many aspects of the system, including the fact that you can sort of move and kite timers, kind of like you could in Dominion or in POS mechanics, uh, old POS warfare, uh, the fact that there's a kiting element really means that if you want to hold your space and be successful, you truly need to have a multi-time zone alliance or a coalition to guard your ass. And there's not that many of those left that can actually yeah. straddle multiple time zones, which is between that and the index system and the way that renting works under Fazisov, what I'm starting to see is not, a, a lot of people were trying to, to create the system in order to, to destroy blocks and design it in a way that would get rid of blocks and coalition warfare and all that, or at least that was the hope. And what I'm seeing here is a system that incentivizes essentially mega alliances of a scale that people in EVE have never seen before. Because, God forbid, what happens if I double the size of Goonswarm, right? What if we bring in Rangers, what if we take some of our allies who are, you know, a lot of allies have historically folded into Goonswarm into other Imperium alliances, what are you gonna do when we can kite your stuff into deep US Prime if you're an only Euro, Euro time zone alliance? And we say, okay, well that's nice, we're in Euro time zone, you set your vulnerability times or timer there, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, fight you at three o'clock Eve time uh, on a uh, Monday morning. So uh, our guys will be fine, and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, losing your job or defending your space. Oh wait, you lost all your eye hubs on the first fight well, because you didn't show up. What do you do? And we're actually yeah. we're getting a lot of questions about the kiting thing, uh, and if at least you wouldn't mind, it's kind of I guess is it, we've already talked about it now. I might as well explain it. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so essentially, well, the way it works is guys, um, let me go, let me throw out the guys. Make sure you type in chat real quick. We're going to be doing the giveaways. Uh, I'm going to try to at least talk as long as possible before we have to shut down the show. So type in chat, follow the stream, and we'll roll through the giveaways in a minute. So, sorry, at least go ahead. Cool, cool. Do, do giveaway stuff. So, Takeda system, or Takeda structure is, um, whenever you, re like, the moment that you finish Intosa saying a structure, 
that's when the reinforcement timer is based off of. It's not when you start. It's not based on the prime time. It's not anything else. It's based on when you end the, the entosis on the structure. But a structure remains vulnerable while there's just a little bit, even one second of entosis mm -hmm. on it until the entosis gets all the way removed. And so that's... essentially what you do is you go like 10 minutes before someone's uh, prime time is about to end. You entosis it for a little while, and then you just park your fleet there forever. Uh, if they come and try and entosis it, you just throw yours on first. Stalemate. Uh, <laughs> so they essentially have to kill you and the ship doing the entosis. Which is hard to can. do if you're stuck in a hell camp in your staging system. There's nothing at all pre <laughs> preventing you from having people come in and entosis a bunch of your stuff and kite it into wherever they want before they knock it into reinforce, mm -hmm. just like a tower. It's yeah. essentially the same method of, of it's tower, exactly the tower same thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the, the neat thing is that because the way uh, FozzySoft scales and Aegisoft scales is you don't necessarily... The only force multiplier is force. So you want to fight people when you're comparatively stronger than them. Not when you're actually stronger uh, as an alliance, but you want to fight when you're comparatively stronger than your enemy. So you just kite it out. So even if your Euro time zone is weak and your or your US time zone is weak, you can kite it to your US time zone because comparatively your enemy has nothing there. So you're, exactly. you're uncontestable to them there. What, what people haven't realized about this mechanic, and that's the reason why I ask, and I, since it went in this way, I can only assume that this was the intent of the developers, because otherwise it would have been well, patched out by now. I, I believe it, it is, I think it at least mentioned that they just said it was supposed to be happening this way. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, when we were doing the playtest, we were like, hey, this is, this is weird. They're like, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. I was like, okay. Wow, okay. <laughs> so basically what I'm hearing here is a system that a lot of people, I, I, I assume this is why there's so much crying on Reddit, is that a system that a lot of people was going to break down massive organized interceptors, uh, massive organized empires with interceptors didn't, was also supposed to inspire fights. If you want to take a region for real, the goal is the region. The goal is not a good fight. The goal is to take the space, get the value, achieve the objective. That's what matters. And using a kiting system like that, you put that in the hands of a, a bunch of jerks like us, um, you know, you aren't going to look for a good fight for software. Some people do that for funsies, but when, when the chips are down and it's us or them, you go in there and you win. And the way that you win is by bringing the maximum amount of force against the completely paralyzed, decimated, demoralized opponent. Uh, lock down their staging system with a hell camp, kite their crap into a time zone they can't handle, but you can, take all their stuff out of the way, and the moment that you blow up some iHubs, uh, is it tr what happens with the strategic index when you destroy an IHUB? Is it reduced okay, to so, zero? Yes, that's what happens. So the TCU doesn't do anything <laughs> anymore. The strategic index is tied to the IHUB. But wow. the other indexes stay the same, right? So if you had a MIL-5 index and an um, Industry-5 index, you kill the IHUB, you put a new IHUB there, you still have MIL-5 and Industry-5 yeah. in there. So the index, so if I conquer a system and put my own iHub, I don't have to jack my index for military and industrial op. I can use my defeated opponents. And it's yes, easier right. to defeat them after we destroy the iHub right. because their strategic index goes to zero, which mm -hmm. means that after that first op in a time zone that they can't contest because you kited their timers, their vulnerability windows are now massive because their ADM has been decreased because their iHub was dead. And then if they want to retake their system, we drop our own iHubs mm -hmm and their own work to mine and rat that system up now becomes a, uh, mm -hmm. a horrible burden that they have to suffer through to recapture what used to be their space. This yeah, sounds like fun. Well, yeah. So what they did is they just lowered the barrier <laughs> to entry to the solve, and then they just advanced the complexity creep. So it's like the more... Well, wait a second. I thought that, you know, that's the thing is complexity creep. Again, like the more complicated the system, only it, it only makes it easier for the organized entities like PLR. The yeah, exactly. That's, that's what people yeah. I think weren't really picking up on. For I've, been, a I've been saying this for months on the show, and people thought that I was spinning because interceptors were going to destroy the Imperium, and it was going to be the end of that. No, you raise the bar of difficulty in a game. Everybody else who can't hack it, the power differential oh, gets scaled. They're screwed. Ah, <laughs> well, I'm not sure whether I want to rant or be smug. Either way, it's a it's a happy place to be. And speaking of being a happy place, why don't we make some of our viewers happy. Nice segue there. I'm rather proud of that one. Uh, by making are, you, are, you, are, are you going to be giving our viewers our happy ending? Is that what's happening here? I, I don't want to give them a happy ending. <laughs> I want to give away a collector's yeah. edition, a couple of pirate codes for our rookie frigates, yep. and uh, a limited edition Art of Eve book. I, I really I, I really wish we had about 45 minutes more of this show so we could really dig into it some more. 
Well, we could potentially have Elise on board next week. I don't know who our guest is scheduled, but I think there's going to be a lot of interest and discussion uh, in the community to just see okay. this, this plays out. Well, in that case, Elise, uh, can we have you scheduled for the next six Saturdays? I mean, <laughs> you, you don't need a weekend, do you? You don't need Saturdays yeah. anymore. <laughs> I mean, I'll, um, Soft time, the only man. people that are going to be mad at me is like the AT testing dudes. Oh. Uh, Gotta gotta nerd out during the alliance oh. tournament. Oh, it doesn't yeah. matter how much you practice, you guys are still gonna lose to Nolly. Yeah, that would be bad. Too. Oh. <laughs> Especially now, because like, what what is Nolly anymore? All right, All right doing the roll, doing the roll. <laughs> Oh, Atra Mentor, one of our subscribers, has won the first code. Atra Mentor, go ahead and post, uh, send us a, a message on the Twitch channel saying you won the Pirate Rookie code, and I'll send that to you. Um, guys, make sure you follow on the stream, and thanks to CCP for giving us these codes, as well as the Collector's Edition of Evil Line and the Limited Edition, edition Art Book. Art of Eve mm -hmm. Book, yes. Very right. much. Thanks so, to CCP for making this happen. And the next winner is going to be Adassel. Adassel, also a follower. Dossel, thank you so much, man. And that is for a prior, prior rookie code. And then the next giveaway, let me make sure I get this right, is going to be the art book, the limited edition art book. It's a really, really awesome book. If you've been to FanFest uh, or eBay, I guess they usually have one of them sitting out. You can flip through it and look at it. There, It's really high quality, um, and whoever gets it, I'm pretty jealous of. So doing the roll now for that. Phantom 1 of 9. Completely Phantom rigged. Phantom 1 of 9, who was just complaining about how we are rigged. Yes. <laughs> all rigged all the time, except for this time rigged. the rigged is in your favor. Nice. Uh, make sure for all of these physical giveaways, and even with the uh, the pirate ship codes, that you send a message to our Twitch channel. Don't say something in chat, because, well, you can if you feel like it, but we'll ignore it. <laughs> uh, for the actual physical goods, we will need your name and address yeah, so we can don't ship put it that to you. In, don't put that in Twitch chat. You can put that in Twitch chat if you want, and then I'm sure lots of people will mail random crap to your house, but that's not our fault. That's your fault. Uh, and uh, I think... A glitter bomb. That'd be great. A glitter bomb would be hilarious. Let's, uh, we should give away glitter bombs officially as, like a, as a subscriber. <laughs> Congratulations, you won a thing. Okay. Speaking of subscriber rewards. <laughs> yes, the next uh, giveaway is the, the 10th anniversary edition of EVE Online. Uh, the EVE Online Collector's Edition. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're saying something in chat here, guys, if you're, uh, if you're a sub and you'd like to win the collector's edition of Eve, you can go ahead and rock it out. Sub hype. All right, so going to give you guys a couple minutes, or not a couple minutes, give you guys about 30 seconds to uh, do this, and then we're going to uh, go ahead and do the roll. Uh, if you can't be asked to type in chat, then you can't be asked to win a collector's edition. Exactly. There so, you go. And coming up immediately after I press the offline button, guys, in shirt show name, uh, we have AKA Squish and the Figmen coming on, going to a... Uh, to do their their uh, 10 minutes of show and we're going to be going to the undead zone after that so guys make sure you stick around for that to let us know what you think about insert show name they're really awesome you should check out their youtube page as well uh i believe it's just insert show name is their their youtube page so doing and then the after that i think we've got the boat uh the boat show i think boat is after show. the undead zone today the boat show oh my God. which is awesome so I'm right. always do they do they still have the original graphic for the boat show because oh the uh the the intro is still the same as i'm actually of everything that we have created here at the matayan.com <laughs> i am probably the proudest of the boat show intro <laughs> it really exactly. reflects the degree of, of of professionalism and uh, <laughs> aesthetics right. that we can all aspire to. In 201, you've won, buddy. You've won the 10th edition, uh, oh, collector's, 10th yeah. edition Evil Line Collector's Edition. Uh, it looks like, guys, thanks again to CCP for the uh, for the goods to give away and the support. Uh, guys, we're going to be winding things down now. Elise, thank you so much for coming on. And, guys, in, coming up next is Insert Show Name. In 201, make sure you message the channel. Yep. Congratulations, everyone. We will see you next week. Next Saturday.